API Intersection podcast listeners are invited to sign up for Stoplight and save up to $650. Use the code Intersection10 to get 10% off a new subscription to Stoplight Platform Starter or Pro. Take a look at this episode's description for more details. I'm Jason Harmon, and this is API Intersection, where you'll get insights from experienced API practitioners to learn best practices on things like API design, governance, identity auth, versioning, and more. Welcome back to API Intersection. Uh, got a, uh, I don't know, I always say this, I got to stop saying, we got an interesting new angle today, but I don't know. Uh, I guess, you know, we, we have an interesting set of guests, but there's always something different in the API world. So uh, today's guest, uh, Daniel Cocott. Um, Daniel, did I say your name right? Yeah, it, okay. it fits actually. So it's, it's, right. it's the English pronunciation, so, so it's right. <laughs> well, how do I say it right? Code Zot. Code Zot. The, the okay. C becomes a Z actually, so it's it's quite complicated. All right, got it. All right. Well, full disclosure, it's been a while since we've recorded. I'm out of uh, sorts. This is usually what I ask before. At any rate, uh, Daniel's head of API experience and operations at Codecentric AG. Um, they do sort of uh, consulting work, and his gig within this is kind of around the API practice. So really interesting to kind of. You know, we usually talk to folks who are sort of building their own platform. Uh, and here it's sort of someone who's going in and looking at different companies. I think uh, we give us kind of a different look at this thing. It's really interesting. So, Daniel, thanks for uh, being with us today. Thanks for the invitation, Jason. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I tried to give a, a lousy introduction there with your name uh, mispronounced and everything. Why don't you give us a better one? Uh, what do you do? At, yeah, I can uh, do it. I can, I can do it. So my name is Inna Kilsert. I'm working for Codecentric in, in Germany. We are um, yeah, a service provider company building a lot of software stuff, actually. And um, yeah, I'm working in the, in the API scene since nearly 2018 or so. Did a lot of integration work ahead, actually. So starting uh, in with Atlassian at Codecentric and, and then moved on to more the, the integration stuff. So there's no greenfield somewhere. So just moving on. And now I'm here talking about all the API stuff we, we're doing with customers in Germany, actually, and yeah, even in, in sometimes in Europe, actually. So we, we have some customers also in Europe around. So I, I sort of assume, but I suppose I should ask, like, kind of how big are the customers you're typically working with? Actually, they have any size from startup to to really big mm. enterprise. So there, there's there's actually no no niche we we are not covering. Actually, talking about API stuff. Actually, in, in, in this case, so I work okay. with everyone from from small companies of two to companies where nearly ten thousand people were working. Actually, very cool. Um, so I think a theme on API intersection here has been, um, you know, kind of trying to find what are the things that work regardless of scale and regardless of industry, like just in the practice of doing APIs. Uh, and certainly, you know, I have a bent toward design, but there's a lot of other aspects. Um, but I think what's more interesting in chatting with you before a little bit is like, what's what tends to always be the thing that's not working well? Like, what are the things that you see that, uh, that always seem to be kind of a bad path that people are going down. Yeah, actually, there is this there is this misunderstanding actually of, of API first, code first. So there there is a lot of discussions actually starting because Codecentric comes from no, normally from from the bottom up approach. So we we working with developers all the time and, and doing things, and it's really hard for for a lot of folks out there to understand what is the purpose of API first and difference to code first and all the stuff. And what we see working with uh, program leads and all the stuff around or people around is that they are lacking a lot of strategy, vision, and 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 all the stuff. So there there is always this yeah some kind of waterfall thing still there. And and ah we we do this because it's needed in the industry. We should do this or we are forced to. This is what we also hear a lot of of times now in in these days. And it's. Yeah, there, there. Actually, there, there's a lot of misconceptions around this API field. So it's not really, yeah, seeing the the benefits out of it. It's just more forcing somebody into it, and and really have to 
to do the things and yeah not not really have this this exchange around or anything like that so it's really everybody's working on their own right now so there is not this api economy or something like that and in my opinion yeah i mean it's interesting that um you know as much as i'm kind of in the business of apis and it's uh you know business is good in the sense that everybody seems to be building something these days um i think what i'm kind of hearing from your your um description there is like sometimes there's a kind of why are you doing this in the first place right yep yeah this is this is always actually the question i i, I talk when i talk with people i i ask them actually what is the purpose why you want to be in this api world what what is your what is your actually your goal to to move on and how do you want to achieve it and uh, sometimes i always also ask the question if there were further attempts to do so and sometimes you 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 get a reaction to this yeah we started some initiatives some time ago and it doesn't really it didn't really work out so this is something i i, I see I see actually a lot here in in in, in the dach region so far I guess, you know, I, we hear that a lot at Stoplight too. And I'm curious from your perspective, like when, when people have gone and, and tried something and they say it didn't work, what, what do you think it is that, that most commonly like doesn't work or where their expectations weren't met? I think sometimes they, they, they want you to have a, the, the, this fast track. So I, I, I think about building APIs and it has to be that fast. That 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 you did you that you get so much speed on it, but they they don't really think about what what's behind that. That you need governance and and all the stuff really really right from the start of saying okay, I have to to think about how should my APIs look like. So bil building things around spectral and all the stuff really knowing validation and 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 all the things behind that. So also getting into the mode yeah of really. Yeah, cutting the the API definition from the rest of the of the uh, yeah of the service actually, because what 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 I see is a lot having this bundled things. So the service is always bundled with with the API definition. Sometimes the API definition lies di directly by the code and all the stuff. So it's it's really something to 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 get rid of. And and this is when it not it's not getting faster they always say oh it's it's it makes us slower we have to think about it in a different way and what i think what a lot of people also lacking are is communication to the consumers or sometimes they they assume things that that consumers might need actually out there or the really bad thing is that sometimes they don't really know the consumers of the api so they're just building things and when you ask them what is the purpose? Who are you you reaching out for that there is nothing really available? So it's really this thing. Oh, I'm I'm thinking for the user, but I but I shouldn't do this because I'm not a user actually. This is something I always point out when I when I have slide decks uh, available to really move back from this thinking to be the user of uh, of the API actually, so that, that you have really the interaction with others around that. Yeah, it's. Uh... It's funny. I feel like in some ways this, uh, well, I guess, first of all, I wanted to clarify, you mentioned API specification or definition. I assume you're talking about kind of open API is, is what you yeah. typically expect to see, right? Okay. Um, the, uh, I think one, there, you touched on a bunch of things. There's like, we can tear this apart. So the first one is uh, this preconceived notion that do APIs go fast, right? Like, the simple equation that you well, if we just tell everyone to build stuff in APIs, we'll be faster, more innovative like that. Right. Yeah. And then the reality, as you point out, is you could be if you do a whole series of things in terms of really thinking about designing your whole platform, not about what is the thing, you know, designing parameters and whatever. Right. Um, so, uh, I mean, I think what you're kind of getting at here is to some extent, though, is that there's kind of kind of got to be a strategy uh, as opposed to just going and doing stuff. But I'm curious from your perspective, like how you think about breaking down strategy, because that's kind of a big thing. There's a lot of moving parts uh, to sort of doing this stuff well. 
Yeah, this is actually really complicated. What I do with, with customers is really, yeah, I, I put this strategy on a mind map actually all the time to really to really see what, what are the, the, the things we, we have to cover what, because there's no real blueprint a print for, for, for the strategy kind of thing because it really depends on your needs, on your business and all the stuff. And this is what a lot of, of customers actually always ask for. Are there any blueprints out there for strategy <laughs> For, for validation and all the stuff. And what we always can really tell is there is no blueprint because we really have to look at use cases, at um, yeah, the, the whole industry you're working in. Maybe there are initiatives already available by, by others so that you can really take part in. Uh, and it's really totally different. So that's why I'm always using this mind map to, to really make sure that that I don't miss a thing actually because talking about strategy is there are so many points on on that so talking about in, in API integration in, interaction patterns and all the stuff it's it's one part you have to to look at security and all the stuff so it's it's a lot of things around you you really have to yeah not even to focus but but you you have to be aware of actually when you, when when you build APIs in this case and this is uh, what what um, we have to think about in this in this case actually. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. I mean, I always tell folks like at Stoplight, our uh, you know some of our biggest customers make things like beer and electrical parts. Like, how on earth could I look at their two different businesses and say that there's much in common strategically in terms of what both their sort of customer needs are? their integration needs, um, you know, like just all the moving parts of those businesses are fundamentally different, much less if you go to like some SaaS based web product, right? So the breadth of kind of, because APIs are basically everything now, you can't say yeah. like, what is the playbook to build a great platform? Well, what kind of platform are you building, right? Like that is to say, what kind of business are you in, right? Uh, and how does it work? And they're all different. So I hear you on that one. Um, I think one, one piece that a lot of people seem to get hung up on early in this thinking through strategy is like, okay, what's the thing that I go buy that solves all this for me, right? Can I just go buy a thing, push the button and it works? Uh, like, I'm curious to hear from your perspective, what those tooling expectations tend to look like. Yeah, actually, it's it's really in this space, really thinking about, hey, I, I will find a tool that will cover all because the industry tells me. So everybody has this full life cycle type of thing. And for one presentation, I, I really blow it off and say, okay, what really does full life cycle API management mean when we look at all the things we, we did with customers? And actually, there is no solution because there, there are so many niches actually there. and and there is not this big thing. And I think it wouldn't also be good to have one big kind of software monolith or something like that that would cover all the needs we have. Because again, there is no real blueprint also for software. Maybe somebody needs an integration platform apart from all the API stuff. There are others they don't need a, such a thing. So they do things differently and all the stuff. So they're looking more into this API in this uh, gateway stuff and, and, and things around. And there are a lot of people actually that I talk with that are that have really discovery problems. So mm -hmm. they're more some kind of portal. Maybe they need some kind of gateway. Maybe they have something available and, and it's possible to, to, to move the things to, to another level. So there are so many different aspects around this tooling type of thing. And even when, when we look at, at, at things that you provide from, from the side of Stoplight, actually, with, with the Stoplight Studio, which, which helps a lot of people to really understand how to, to build an API with, with this form editor type of thing, which we use a lot with customers, actually, because normally the, the, de the developers we work with at the moment are not able to write open api directly and you shouldn't in my opinion because it's it's just uh, some kind of specification written down in a yaml or json file so there is a need of having this editor type of thing just to put things there and 
develop things over time and maybe you have some kind of stand standards available that you just can reference to and say okay we we have some kind of understanding for error messages and all the stuff to to make it really really available so but it's also not depending on having stoplight studio thinking about having specific models has nothing to do with with tooling again so so there, right. there's a, a lot of again misconceptions again so everybody yeah. is talking about this and a lot of people see then when we talk in um, in, in conversations with with uh, customers or prospects of us that there are actually other needs they have to cover. So looking more into this developer experience type of thing, which for me it's it's again sometimes it's just buzzword blowing things that are, that are around. So it's it's We're really API first, developer experience oriented. Yeah, it's it's uh, some, something. <laughs> That you can't really, really grip by by your hands and say, okay, this is this is what 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 is meant by that. So it's really always depending on on the situation we are in, and so 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 we have to cover as in a consultancy so many needs actually, and yeah, to 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 yeah. choose the right the right thing at the right time. So what what I I normally do with projects is that I totally drop off the the conversations about API gateways. So that mm -hmm. the customers start really with building APIs. And then when they have a bunch of, they can think about, oh, what we need in this? Oh, do we have something right available at, 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 at the organization or something like that? And then think into the next steps, actually. So this, this is really an approach we um, did with customers, which really worked out. Because having this kind of software available, there's always this thing, yeah, we have to do to do it with this because we bought it and we have a subscription running we we need it and it's really yeah sometimes also annoying then to to see oh this is not possible we did this with in another project that that worked quite well but in this case we have to do things because all the tools we have are pluggable and sometimes it's not possible to 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 reuse things you you might it earlier some somehow yeah um it reminds me of a place i worked once before where uh, there was a lot of platform strategy stuff going on and um i was kind of getting up to speed and they went hey uh, there's this huge group that's you know been getting together and talking about which api gateway we should be using as a standard across all the divisions um, do you want to get involved and help sort that one out and i went how long have they been meeting like a year I went, no, I'm not interested in that. Uh, I'm going to go work upstream from that, and that'll sort itself out uh, later when we look at it differently, right? Yeah. Um, but I like, too, that you kind of touched on that a lot of companies are learning what to do from kind of the, uh, the, the Gartner sort of flap them, as, uh, as the acronym goes, the full lifecycle API management approach. Um, you know, I, I recently wrote a piece kind of talking about this that in, in what world would you set the expectation that you should buy one thing that does everything? And by the way, this is for everything in the world now. Everything has an API. So you want to buy the one piece of software that does all, pro all parts of development for all things in the world. The all singing, all dancing, like, sure, I'm sure it looked great to investors, but it's a naive notion, right? Yep. Uh, and at Stoplight, too, I mean, we get this kind of, well, how do you do all the things? We say we don't. You know, we help you design good stuff. Uh, and to your point, you don't have to have a three-day training class on Open API for hundreds of developers. Right? Like they'll just produce a good spec, and it's fine. Um, caveat, by the way, here I didn't put Daniel up to mentioning Stoplight or Spectral, uh, so I have no. to say that <laughs> uh, that's not what the show is for. Um, at any rate, uh, yeah, I think that kind of looking at all that. There's so many other things besides the gateway controlling access to something. Um, and for me, at least, and I think you're saying the same thing, is that upstream from that, all the things that you did before you developed the API, why should we do this thing? What does it do for our business? What is it called? What do customers, do they understand what those words mean, right? Like, if those things are done well, the gateway sort of whatever, it's an implementation detail, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Def definitely. So. So again, what we have in Germany is also discussions about language, actually, of, of APIs. 
So we, we have companies that, that would like to have a German speaking API where we say, yeah. where we normally say, okay, maybe you look for an international market, not for now, but you will have international developers through, through the time actually working with the company. It will be quite hard for them to understand what this German word really meant in, in, in their yeah. specific language. And, and it's, it's really, really interesting to, to have such discussions actually, because you, you can you can help people to to really move on directly into the right direction yeah that's and very when interesting you, when you just have this tooling this a tooling doesn't care about how how we name things and and all the stuff so and and what what i see a lot actually is is this copy thing so when we talk about api guidelines we see a lot of copied things from Zalando and all the stuff available and and when yeah. you talk with people uh, do you have guidelines? Yeah, we we have them here. Uh, 15, 15 uh, pages of, of uh, guidelines. And I'm always 15 pages. Oh, might be Zalando. Because normally when you know when, <laughs> when you print them out earlier, <laughs> you know how long they're actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when you look at them and you see you see this, this, this keywords and all the stuff, you always say, oh, they just copied things. That's not good. So we have to restart it. Actually. But I, I guess I, I'm curious I, though, what's... What's not good about that? Because earlier you said, and I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Earlier yeah. you said, you know, like there's no standards for these things. There's no standard way of doing it. Well, like if Zalando or any other company has gone and done a great job at det determining all this stuff, why shouldn't I just use that? Why can't I just say I use the Zalando standard? Because it's the standards of Zalando, actually. So it's it's not appearing to be your own, actually. And and um, to, to give you some insights on the project side, I actually with a project about this because somebody said yeah we're just doing the copying thing and i said no then it's not the best thing to work together because copying things and not really uh, having things uh, fitting to your needs in this case it's it's it, it doesn't feel good in this case it's not the thing i would like to do actually to to approach things and and bring governance into it just to be on the fast track and saying, okay, here we have the guidelines available, 15, 15 pages or anything like that, or 21. So it's, it's really, really something that, that has to come from, from this initiative, from this program, saying this is what, what is our opinion about APIs. Because normally when people start with APIs, they're just focusing on, the, on, on this REST stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you have people that, that are moved further on saying oh we don't need this api stuff because we we doing event-based stuff and, and you know, always saying mm -hmm. yeah you should also think about documentation and all the stuff because there are other specifications available and this is this is really really interesting talking with people people about that and saying okay it's not just about this rest interfaces whatever they mean it's it's really about yeah this discovery of the whole services you have available and this is why I'm actually dropping APIs out of my vocabulary when I talk with, with people about the situation they're in. I'm, I'm just talking about services. And maybe that, that helps them to, to abstract the, the, the things even more. Um, myself and many others have referred to this as like, talk about the capabilities. Like what are the things that you want to do? Uh, and don't worry about the API itself first. Right, that yeah. you can put together a shape of that based on the the kind of words in their relationship. It sounds primal and kind of simplistic, but uh, yeah, that's sometimes you have to take all the technical stuff out of the mix to actually build the right thing, huh? Um, but I, I got to go back, Daniel, and ask again, like you know, uh, mm -hmm. if if there's a good standard out there, you know, you're saying. Uh, I think in one sense that there needs to be this almost social contract, right? That people have come together and agreed on something and that that's valuable. Um, and I think we can come back to that, but like, what, why did you quit that project? Why did you, why were you so certain that that would have failed had they just sort of copy pasted their, their standards or their style guide or whatever you want to call it? Um, yeah, it, it was part of that, just copying things. And, and from the beginning on, there was, still this misconception so it was really built up on tools from the beginning so we 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 just didn't have the 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 thing around so, so there were many many things around actually 
was also talking about languages, about APIs in this case, and it was really, really hard to 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 yeah to 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 make yeah the points out in this case and saying okay this is we do this because of and nobody was really understanding because there was this in the end I I, I know it because they they were really missing this this product thinking type of thing. they they were mm. just thinking about still an integration stuff and uh, just providing integration APIs with with no further yeah idea of how to move on and and how to present things uh, in a different me, in a different angle angle actually j just just focusing on this integration stuff in this way so do you and think just, that it's do you think that it's primarily kind of the reusability factor that mm -hmm. it's not considering like looking at hey i apply an integration pattern to this one integration and now i have a single use case mm -hmm. thing that i can't reuse in other scenarios is that probably is that maybe why yeah, this this is this is also one 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 part actually. That that is what what we see at um, at projects quite often. So really focusing on specific use cases, and when when we when we start thinking about um, to break it down, it's really coupled to budgets and all the stuff, so that that people yeah. are not really focusing on what are the core APIs or the core values maybe of a of an organization or company. Just focusing on specific things. Where you can really see, okay, this is one specific use case, but when I want to have more insights on 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 this relevant data, there is nothing actually available. I I have to to do things on my own and and build it. So it's 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 also in 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 that way. It's it's really folk. Yeah, yeah, the missing focus on on what what is really relevant for for the company as a whole, not for this specific yeah. project we are talking about. Because in the end, creating APIs is still yeah, dealing with projects on uh, on a, on another level, actually. In this case, yeah. No, it's funny. That's it's. Uh, I find it interesting that like you, you almost struggle to say like why exactly, and and you know, and I understand like it's this. Hey, there's a you got to think through what is your platform going to be not what is this API you're about to build, right? And I feel like in some ways we should be calling this like platform design is the thing that needs to be explained. Uh, yeah. And that whether it's a REST API or an async thing, or, you know, you think GraphQL is going to solve all the world's problems or whatever else it is, right? Whatever the, the hashtag of the day in architecture is, um, you know, you, you think, okay, we, that doesn't matter. We know what we do uh, and we know how to describe it. Right. Uh, and whatever means we need to package that for in that case, then great. But I think across the course of our conversation, what I feel like I have to call out here that we didn't really say is, and I think we did. Uh, so early on, you're saying, you know, you got to be able to, to know the consumer who's going to use it. You actually have to talk to them. You have to understand their needs. Um, you have to be able to describe things in a way that's going to be global in its purpose that's, uh, you know, that's clear and understood. You got to design the thing before you build it. Right. Um, and, um, and you kind of got to know what's, what's core and important, what's not for what it's worth. I could t apply all those things that, that you said to any product. And that is just to say that, um, treat your platform as a big product and the individual APIs are sort of sub products that should fit into a bigger picture right don't um and all of this is to say that earlier we said that the big misconception is build apis go fast and in some ways what i think we got to there at the end was that if you can reuse if you can do those projects back to back and each time you build something it's useful for other scenarios that's how you speed up right but it takes intention and discipline to do so. So I don't know. I'm trying to sum up and pull all this together for you. But tell me if I got it wrong. No, that's that's that's, that's totally totally right. Actually, so this is this is what 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 we are focusing and to 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 bring people to to that place, saying, okay, this is this is what you need. Find find the right purpose, actually, and and um, this initiative program, whatever you call it, can be a success. Because yeah. this is this is this is the fast way here in Germany, just cutting down things when they are not that fast. Because normally, the, the, the easiest KPI in API in API projects is to look 
at the number of APIs actually. And when you, when you say, okay, after one year, we, we provided only five and you don't look at the value of them, then it's, it's really hard to say, okay, just five. Oh, that's really, that's really slow. So just drop the initiative and, and do something yeah. else because we missed it. And this is, this is really something that's, that's, that's bother, is bothering me all the time. So. Well, that's an interesting question. What do you tell folks when they say, what should our sort of first KPI be versus how many APIs we developed? In, in the end, the first KPI I'm always talking about is this uh, first steps to Hello World. How long does it take to, to really get into, into an API that, that, that we provide at, at, at first sight? So how long does it really take to, yeah, to get a result back from, yeah. from this API? Yeah, it's and a good like, the, developer yeah, experience, and really ease of use measure. Yeah, and, and, and then really thinking about all the other stuff because all the measurements, all the metrics and, and thinking about monetization, it's something you shouldn't do from the beginning because it's, it's not worth in the end. Yeah, you figure those things out per product, right? You don't focus on the, the API itself, but rather the product that it's delivering or the, the capability that it's delivering. There's usually a measure of that that's far more useful. Cool. Well, uh, man, we covered a lot of ground. Uh, I feel like I'm going to have to go, uh, you know, it's, it's morning recording for this one, but I feel like I'm going to have to go have a drink after this. We, we, uh, we went all over the place, man. That was great. Um, thank you so much for being so open and, and really sharing a lot of kind of what you've seen and learned in this. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Um, well, I wish you the best on, uh, you know, your future consulting engagements and, uh, you know, love to hear from you in the future on, uh, on where this kind of, uh, dipping into API product and capabilities and all that stuff goes for you. So take care, Dan. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for listening. If you have a question you want to ask, look in the description of whichever platform you're viewing or listening on, and there should be a link there so you can go submit a question and we'll do our best to find out the right answer for you.